taken all the right measures to detect, follow and trace all the contact of this uh, man. Shaif says Nigeria will have to pass through two incubation periods of 21 days each, and if no cases of the disease are confirmed for 42 days, the country will be declared Ebola free. For NPR News, at least a short region. Floods and landslides in western Japan have killed at least 36 people, and other seven are still missing.
I don't see why those neighborhoods didn't have a delay. Ruderman says it's a matter of basic fairness. Large portions of my district were disenfranchised from the right to vote through no fault of their own. Kuna voters initially were told they would have 21 days to mail in an absentee ballot, but the state's election office decided to change course and instead held a special mock election a week later. It's curious to me, I've never heard it explained, why the decision to be announced on election day, which was what mail you the ballot for the two weeks, why that was changed on Monday afternoon so that we're going to have a walk in election in three days. The state Supreme Court has legal authority over elections, while the commission has the power to hire and fire the chief elections officer. Elections Commission Chair William Marston says Friday's meeting will include time for public testimony, and Chief Election Officer Scott Nago will face questions from the commission. We want to hear from the standpoint of the chief election officer and those involved their explanation of what went on and why it went on and who they were concerned with. The only thing that we have seen or heard since the election is what's been in the press and in the media. And uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's time we hear from the other side and see if we can uh, make sense of it. Friday's public meeting starts at 10 a.m. at the state office tower. Following a review of the primary election, the Elections Commission will meet in executive session. Molly Solomon for HPR News. You can find this and other news reports on our website at hawaiipublicradio.org. U.S. Senator Brian Schatz is working with state and local officials on the Big Island to form a hazard mitigation plan for albizia trees. Schatz met with State Senator Russell Ruderman, Director of Civil Defense. Moderate rebels and Islamic State Militants. Robert Ford was the U.S. Ambassador to Syria from 2010 to 2014 and is now a resident scholar with the Middle East Institute here in Washington. He says even though the U.S. was quick to launch airstrikes against the Islamic State in Iraq, it is still nervous about committing the American military in Syria. Ambassador Ford, welcome to the show. Nice to be with you. We have been talking to Syrians this week, and the thing that we hear over and over again is, you know, how did the Yazidis get so lucky? People from this religious minority in Iraq are trapped on a mountain, and the U.S. calls in airstrikes, yet the Syrian people have been trapped and besieged by these same Islamist rebels and... ...but not, not nearly enough, and certainly not airstrikes, but the legally recognized government in Iraq requested U.S. military support. Bashar al-Assad has not done that in Syria, no surprise. And so the legal status of American actions in Iraq is different. Sure, but I think there's some people who would say that at some point, you know, the humanitarian threat... Explain to me exactly what and 
who the Browns are getting for all this cash. But David, they're getting a great college football player. He won the Heisman Trophy in 2012. He set tons of records for, for passing and for running uh, while playing in the SEC, which is arguably the best college conference in, in the country right here. But by the same token, they're getting somebody who gained a reputation at Texas a and as a partier. In business news, inflation has lowered. HBR's Bill Dorman has more in today's Asia Minute. Among all the nations of Southeast Asia, Malaysia has the lowest rate of women participating in the workforce. The World Bank puts it at about 47% of working age women. Morning edition from NPR News. I'm Kelly McEvers in for Steve Inskeep. And I'm David Green. Good morning. Liberia has been overwhelmed by the Ebola outbreak. This country has seen the highest number of deaths so far. Late last night, Liberia's president announced a 9 p.m. curfew in the capital, Monrovia. She also ordered a quarantine of the city's overcrowded West Point neighborhood.